start another recording. So hopefully this little trick will help me to display the number as a label on our you know, timer window. If I try to compile this, and this happens often, right? If I say build, okay? So what comes back is this kind of little nasty uh, thing uh, in the output. So it says, error, uh, the label, you see, I am trying to make, I don't know how to unpin this. I mean, I really need to um, just say dog, right? Okay, so I can see both. So look what happens. I say window object has window timer pointer to a window. This window is a smart object. It knows to it knows how to do many things, including um, including. Let me do restart this. Okay. So, including uh, setting the the window title. What it's what it's unhappy about uh, right now is it says uh, window label, which is expecting a pointer to a character string cannot convert parameter one, which is uh, a standard library basic string, which is, uh, by the way, something ret returned by this member function, uh, cannot be converted to this pointer. So for this reason, a standard library string, which is returned by this call, can it has another method, um, another member function, name convert this to C string. Okay, so it's it's a little crazy, but uh, I'll I'll try to make it um, you know easier in a second. But this is this is what the real code should look like, I guess, right? So let me save this and build it and just make sure that it it builds and we can run it. All right, so we do get some warnings there uh, as previously. So when I say start this time, here it goes one, two, three, and so forth, right? So when I say stop, we say stop and everything stops. I say start again. I never reset the counter, so it continues on with you know, continuous numbers and uh, stop again. the The last number was twelve. Start again, thirteen, fourteen, and so forth. All right. So this kind of works. All right. Well, I guess we already spent a lot of time with this uh, little project, and you know, we have. Uh, uh, I would like to uh, stop on this. We made some recordings uh, on this. We lost a little piece, but I will post the sample. So the entire code will be in place. We can all, always pick it up from this point. I, I guess I would love to come back to all this code and try to demystify some things. I will remember to do this as we go through our formal presentations. But we now have something real to refer to that actually does something. And it does something that makes sense other than just like printing hello on, on the console output. All right, so in essence, you know, the plan is to basically wrap it up right now. I guess let's do a quick review. If, if we were like, you know, one of my favorite uh, menu options here is to say close all documents, okay? So clear the screen. So going back to our uh, solution thing, so historically, we kept adding the source files. This guy generated by Fluid. Very simple, right? It's just something that Fluid did. We never even explored this other than saying, we know that the window was created by new, uh, the button was created by new, and another button was also created by new. Enough said, okay, right. Then we added, I guess historically, our main function right here. Right? So we design a class which is responsible for keeping track of everything that happens inside our window, including some of the events, like button clicks and this animation event, the timer event. Then we said that we have to create it, and it's a very typical approach for graphical programming. First, you want to create all of your objects so they have a chance to configure themselves and then you show the window. Like you don't want to show the window that is not fully constructed or somehow, you know, has still unmanaged parts. 
So you want to show the window after you know that it's been created completely. Do not assume that this window is something that looks like this. No, 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 no. This window is an object that wraps around everything. It's like a business object. So it contains the window, it contains the buttons, it contains everything. But this is a business object that, that essentially wraps all this graphical user interface. The real graphical user interface is actually generated for us by Fluid. And if I, again, reopen Fluid file and go to the timer header. So here they are. Double window is an object which is responsible for maintaining graphical window with all the functionality. Button is the button, and this button is the button. Now, we inherit all of this and absorb it in our own um, uh, class timer window. If I open our own header right here, I absorb all of this. So now I can pretty much close the Solution Explorer and go back to the header, you know, uh, the view of both headers. We observe all of this generated by Fluid by inheriting from it. We say, we're going to do our things, but we also would like to do everything that this class can do. And this class is already designed for us by Fluid. Now, notice this. In the Fluid code that the Fluid has generated, this is our window position and window height and everything, right? So X and Y and height and width and all that. And the label, start and stop, everything is here, generated for us by Fluid. We never examine this code in detail, but we will come back to it. We just know that Fluid knows how to do those things. And beautiful part of it is that we can always go back to our Fluid designer, make some changes, and regenerate this code. So we never write our own co code in those files, but we can always use Fluid to update or you know add other widgets and controls and everything else. All right. So that's what we did. And then we said, well, we kind of, by reading documentation uh, of the library itself, uh, we should know how to add callbacks for buttons and for this uh, timer thing. So you can actually have multiple timer events. One could kick in every second, another one every half second, and so forth. It's up to you. Just remember that uh, you are basically taking time from the application message pump that uh, needs to be uh, healthy and alive all the time. So anyway, the next thing was that we said show. <laughs> uh, show actually was written by us right here. So let's show this side by side, right? So the show did a couple of things. So maybe show is a little deceptive because before actually telling the FLTK window to say, OK, go ahead and show the window, we added a couple of callbacks to our buttons. right? So maybe we could do this in the constructor. But uh, in this case, I will postpone the explanation. I think it's safer to do it not in the constructor but wait till the constructor is completely done, and then do it in the um, in the in the separate member function. So I, I kind of did it this way. So make sure I have two callbacks, and and uh, you know added those static functions. They have those weird signatures. All oh, okay. Well, all this technicality, it's in place, and the code really isn't that bad because you know just a few lines per every function call. That's not bad. That that's manageable, right? One thing to notice, and this is what we're going to do after finishing our discussion, our formal introduction on constructors, all kinds of constructors, and what constructors can do. Another important part that you should sense right away, everything that we do here, we use a pointer. Well, simply because, look, <laughs> again, let me try a blank. Uh, a drawing here. If I have, you know already, I created an object, right? I created an object. Okay, here it goes. A fluid window creator, whatever, designer, went ahead and created, you know, used those new, new operators. And so the objects are constructed in memory. 
there are windows that uh, there are buttons there could be some other pieces here and I that I don't even know of those objects themselves can be compositions of other objects which I don't even know and I'm not supposed to know it's okay with me I know that the library really knows what it's doing but more objects could be created but ultimately when my program here in memory with all my functions and all executable code so I'm not drawing this as 3D this is executable code like you know frozen compiled program in memory that's trying to execute something what happens here that everything that I do with my objects I do it through pointer I never duplicate well how can I possibly think of making a copy of a window silly idea probably unsafe even right so everything that the program does it uses a pointer to access every object so using pointers in object-oriented programming C++ anyway is absolutely a must this is how one function here can call another function and just pass this little pointer which is the size of an integer uh, to this other function and say hey you too can access this object that's it so pointers really make it all possible because real objects do take resources some of them can be big right if you're loading like a you know four gigabyte size movie into memory it's gonna take like four gigabytes of memory right or you know something of that of that nature right but the code should never attempt to duplicate anything because it's already in memory the solution to this is have pointers to these objects and you can pass pointers around they're really small there's just the size of integer that's that's pretty neat and each CPU instruction can very successfully deal with integer si size data and so that's what happens so that's why when we go to this code everything pretty much everything that we used uses a pointer everything is communicated by a pointer well yes objects are created at some point but beyond that point everything is accessed indirectly we never say okay let's take that object and make a copy of it and pass it to, to another portion of our program that would be crazy well first of all that would be wasting time this would be inefficient and in many cases some objects cannot be duplicated like for instance your database connection you probably don't want to duplicate that because your you know your uh, database server probably will not be happy because it has already authenticated that particular database connection and never expects it to be frivolously you know duplicated by a user you really need to say well I have my database connection and it's pretty unique and it's already connected so there is no way I can duplicate it I have to use this specific instance all the time I can close the connection destroy my connection then create a new one but once created it's unique it's important it's like you know it needs to be preserved and all I can do is that I can actually go ahead and use pointers to access it. all right 